Hey, this is Eddie with Fast Eddie's. Uh, we're out here looking at this uh, old Frigidaire Affinity dryer. Let's see here. See so if we get to come up with the code. Customer's complaint was as an E64 code. Let's see if we can get to pop up real quick. Okay, well, I'm going to say that I actually seen it personally. The 64 code on it where I first arrived here. Turned the knob, went away. Um, but um, if, if you come across it and you see an E64 in the display right in there, then you're going to be dealing with this. Okay? So the first thing we're going to do, stop the unit. Um, we're going to take remove the screws out of the back okay make it where the back panel slides forward i mean the top panel top slides forward okay we're going to go right here on the left hand side right behind the name and you got one of these you open it up Okay, and if you look right here on the left hand side here, this thing's not going to focus for me very well. Okay, Let's see. that one's the E64. Okay, it says heater open circuit. Well, now you can see it. Um, but as you can see, like E61, E63, E65, that's all to do with element. E64 or 54 there, that, that's to do with the motor. Uh, just, just if you start getting into the 60s, just uh, expect it to be an element issue or something near that. Um, so it was saying. That it was open heater circuit okay and this is how we test that but it, just because it says e64 and we say it's a heater doesn't mean it's a heater i'll say you know 10 percent of the time you got a back control board you got a wiring issue you got something like that um so i'm gonna put this down for just a hair You look in here on this control board after I pulled the top off of it, you'll see that you got some wires here that have two one of them, one Molex plug has a a uh, two gray wires, and the other one has one gray wire. Those are your those three gray wires are your three um, legs of your element. Okay. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take an ohmmeter with the thing unplugged, okay, and ohm out through one leg to the other and from one the other leg to the other okay if you have an open element you will have it well let's see here
Okay. So I got those those two two boxes there. One's a green, one's a white or a clear. Um, so you got the gray wire, center gray wire on the green one, outer gray wires on the clear one or white. Um, like I said, so you take them two outer ones and you measure for resistance across them. If it was open, if it was an open circuit, then you know right there is where you have your eating on is uh, open circuited. Um, I'm not going to show you on my uh, meter today because my meter decided on the display it was going to show some funky numbers. So the thing still functions. It's just not where I can show you on video on you know showing the resistance. But basically, if it's an open circuit, uh, you got an open circuit on your element. Time to get down to the element. Uh, you have to replace it. Um, now the other thing is I want everyone to know is that uh, blocked up vents. Um, that kind of stuff puts extra wear on these. They're very susceptible. The, the actual heating element itself is, uh, the, ha the actual heating element itself is a uh, is very, very light material. Um, they, the, the coils themselves, they'll, they'll actually, you know, sag very easy. They don't hold together very well. Um, like the, old, the older ones have a thicker uh, actual materials they're made out of. Um, but the newer ones, they're, they're very, very thin, and they want to sag. So any amount of extra heat that it generates, it, it causes the actual element to misshapen. And when that happens, that's whenever you get issues where these are burning out prematurely uh, on the frigid air affinity models. So the big deal is get the vent cleared. If the vent is too long of a run, if the vent... Uh, is uh, misshapen at all correct it okay um, you have a there's a rule of thumb with venting is, is you have a maximum of 25 feet okay and each 90 degree bend takes five feet out of that okay so if you got coming off the vent off the dryer itself you got a 90 degree bend going down okay five feet you got a 90 degree degree going left well then that's that's 10 feet right off the top you got 15 feet left how many how many turns you got left um, so you got to really think about you know your venting on these things you need to get it as clear as possible that, that vent is detrimental to these elements um, and that's not even a restricted vent that's just you know a normal household vent itself being just just not perfect can be can be the problem itself um, so not always you know the answer is not always just cleaning it uh, I hate to say that but especially on these models um, but anyway next thing is we're gonna take apart the top here and um, get to that element let's put a pause here I don't, I don't I have to I don't have, only have two hands so we're gonna just take it all apart like that. Okay, you remove the screws from the that middle piece there. And that middle piece there. And control pulls right up. Just pulls up. And there you go out of your way. Um, you got some screws right there. Some screw, screw right there. Screw right there. right there and the screw right there two more screws right you got you got three more screws right above, along the bottom of this so there's one there not the not the clips just the screw itself I guess just two on this one see the other one right there okay now once you got all them screws undone, this thing's not going to want to come off very easy, okay? You, what, I tell, what I try to do myself is I try to lift up and then pull out at the same time, okay? Okay, you got a screw there and a screw there. A little plug you have to unplug as you're taking it apart. Be careful with that. You can just yank, yank, uh, yank apart stuff if, you don't, if you're not careful. Um, of course those two screws there 
and we're getting somewhere. Okay guys, I want to show you my favorite tool in my toolbox right here. That's a plug from a, like an old Whirlpool uh, washer, um, like the, I don't know, the switch harness plug. And um, what I do is, I take that shank right there, I put it right inside of it. It gives me the, the most awesome knuckle driver a person could ask for. Works perfect on these 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 uh, dryers to get that element out that screw. If you look back there, there's a, just one screw that is in an awkward place. So we're gonna take that one screw out with that little handle I have. Okay. And notice that I'm not removing the tub. Okay. I kind of got ahead of myself here, guys. Okay. There's the new element. Okay. Um, placing my, uh, put my thermals back on it. Um, I noticed that tub's still in there because that little tool I used on the little screw back there. Um, but uh, there's a new one. Here's the old one. This, my friends, is what's happening to these elements. Okay, that's the front side, the you know, the one closest to the front of the unit. That's the back side, the one where all the heat's built up at. And you see how everything's just, just kind of, you know, I guess, let's see here. This would be the bottom. Okay, so everything just kind of crinkles in and starts, you know, grounding out on one side, you know, and then grounding to each other on the other side. So, I mean, it's, this is happening with all of them. Um, get, gotta get the heat down, okay? Um, and that's why we talk about the vent and everything. But uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and get this back in here. The screw here, and the screw here. Okay, and then you got the screw in the back, then you got two screws uh, on top of right there, then your your two thermals right there. That's four, to four screws total. Okay, then um, should be good to go. I'm gonna slide it back in and plug everything back up. We got your three terminals there, four terminals there, and one terminal on that side. After putting the after putting the element on this dryer, I had actually forgotten to uh, show you guys that it worked. Um, the dryer did work, uh, <laughs> and um, so what we did we put an element on it. Uh, we put all the put it all back together, and um, the code was the E64, and the the correction for it was to test uh, test the element. It has three actual elements inside the housing. Uh, we found that two of the elements were dead, like no continuity through them. Um, once we tested that, we replaced the element, put it back together, and heated up just fine. Worked great. Uh, no other complaints um, out of it. Um, wish I could have showed you more with the E64 code. Um, actually, doing it, um, I was I was fortunate where. The customer had already had it showing the E64 when I first arrived, uh, but I started uh, messing with the control and it went away uh, before I could show everyone. So, um, um, that's it. Thank you. Bye.